Hey guys, how's it going? My last video when I recorded I was talking about real estate investing when you have $300,000 and how good to invest in the city of Kirkland and you can buy properties for $6,650 with positive cash flow but I got a very uh, good comment on Facebook from one of my friends and he is asking me questions all like how to invest for millennials? They finish college and university right at recession time from 2008 to 2012 uh, we got just um, entry-level jobs right now with our degree and we have only 15 to 30 thousand dollars in savings account so how to invest when you have 15 or 30 thousand dollars and be ahead of your game stay tuned and i hope you enjoy this episode And how to invest in real estate when you have only 15 to 30 thousand dollars? Is that even possible? <clears throat> yes, it's possible. So it's possible to invest money if you have just very little money, even 15 to 20 or 30 thousand dollars. And you don't have to move to Tacoma or you don't have to buy a property in every. You actually can buy on the east side, uh, close in locations and invest smartly your money if you have those monies available options you can exercise and uh, one of the uh, simplest options you can do uh, when you don't have any properties and you buy your first property so you can uh, buy like uh, in a nice location like in Basel, Kirkland, Redmond right now uh, kind of minimum for about up to $400,000 there's plenty of properties on the market but most of the minimums when you buy it with, and you put 5% for down payment that's going to be about uh, you probably gonna need about $20,000, $25,000 to buy and when you buy this property, uh, most condominiums not allowed to rent properties for one year because all of them have rental cap. But when you keep property and live as a primary residence or as an owner there for one year and put it a rental application to rent your place, and eventually you're going to be able to rent place for somebody else. And when the, that's available, you can move up to different place. You can keep your condominium and that's going to become your first rental property your first investments another way to invest on this side uh, is like i was checking on an mls for different properties possibly good locations and what i find out is i uh, like uh, really zip code 98072 98072 that's south of woodenville south from 522 highway all the way to kingsgate kirkland this location where it's like very popular location where the hollywood hill and on the Kirkland side, you still can buy a house for about $550, $575 right now. So it's going to be not a big house, it's going to be a Rambler, about 13, 1500 square feet. But when you buy this Rambler with 5% down payment, and if you pay like, let's say $600,000, so you're probably going to end up to have $30,000 for down payment. So if you have those money available, your mortgage payment, include taxes, insurance, and everything will be approximately. Uh, if you have a good score, of course, uh, with today's rate 3.75, your mortgage payment is going to be approximately uh, 3,200 a month. And um, that's not going to cover your rent right now because rent in area approximately about 2,800, 2,700, 2,800 a month. But, but one thing you can do, uh, if you buy it, the primary residence from Windsor. And if you're a single person, you can get a roommate and rent one room for $700. It's pretty easy. And this $700 will offset your mortgage payment. And possibly you're going to end up having a couple hundred dollars a month positive cash flow, even you, if you buy property this way with low down payment. Many different ways to invest. You can invest in other states. Uh, you can invest uh, you know, farther areas as well, but my personally, I'm prepared to invest in a good uh, central locations because first of all, it's a, you know, always security with the job, it's quality of people you live on around and quality of people you're going to rent it to as well. This is like very important steps because in real estate, it's number one goal to invest is location, location and location. Uh, and what to do, like let's say if you don't have even ten thousand dollars. If you have only five thousand or three thousand or two thousand dollars, the best what you can do for yourself: repair your credit. So, pay off your credit cards. Never keep on credit cards more than five percent balance ever. And when you have like five percent balance on your credit cards or less, 
your credit score will be increased and can be help you uh, a lot in the future and will improve your credit score a lot. And also guys, I want to highlight you 10 reasons why you should invest your 15 uh, to 30 thousand dollars to buy the property instead of renting the property and i hope those benefits will help you to understand why you should do that benefits number one you can do whatever you want with the property uh, and if you rent the property for example you sign an agreement with landlord and i uh, to to do anything with the property like painting the house changing the carpet or you know put it in the kitchen or maybe like build it some nice deck outside and build, build barbecue pit uh, you need to ask permission from your landlord and sometimes landlord will not uh, allow you to do anything or without any permission and if you do that it's going to be break a lease and, and they will ask you to vacate the property if you buy the property you don't have this problem and reason number one is you can do whatever you want with the property reason number two you don't have to deal with landlord uh, sometimes people is crazy and I, I see crazy landlord and see good landlords and uh, you know i'm a good landlord but like i have uh, people who's like really crazy about the tenants they can check how many cars you park outside if you have a big party or invite a lot of people and many cars parking on your front driveway your landlord might call you and say hey you know just what's going on with the house and it's going to be right on you and that's going to be sometimes not really comfortable um, and if you guys you know buy the property you don't have this problem you can do whatever you want with the property reason number three if you buy the property you will be never asked to leave or vacate the property and this is really a big reason uh, when you sign this agreement uh, usually it's you sign for one year and after one year your landlord uh, can make decisions to sell the house or maybe rent it to somebody else or relatives or maybe moved in back himself there he will ask you to leave and if uh, in area uh, rent is increased uh, you have to be end up to pay more for the rent and need to uh, you know vacate the property move to different location and that's a lot of hassle you know like how difficult is moving and when you buy the property you own the property and you don't have to move you will be never asked to leave or vacate the home you will be in control what to do with the house and you will make decisions when you want to move or you know how long you want to live in this home and now we get to reason number four uh, if you rent the property sometimes landlord will ask you to increase the rent uh, do you know guys how much a landlord can increase rent like in Seattle area uh, in general uh, they increase in rent from five to eight percent a year and if you rent like two thousand dollars you probably gonna be end up paying hundred dollars a year more in the following years uh, you know when you sign new lease agreement on even more but when you buy the property you don't have to be worried about that and reason number five if you buy the property you're gonna be forced to save the money when you pay your mortgage every month you paying your mortgage for 30 years and your mortgage is going to be a little bit less and less and less and less until you totally paid off your mortgage and you don't have any mortgage at all and you're gonna own this property and many people are very bad with saving the money they usually cannot save i uh, cannot hold to the money if, you, if they got money money is pretty much gone right away and when you buy the property you're gonna be better off in the future and somebody who's renting the property what those people do uh, they pretty much paid off somebody else mortgage reason number six home appreciation home appreciation is very important too uh, you guys know like in general in the United States houses appreciate about four or five percent a year for hundred years regardless from any recessions but in our area uh, I made uh, comparables what houses appreciate on the east side market like cities like Kirkland, Redmond, Bellevue, Newcastle, Woodenville, Samoa, Mishisekwa they appreciate about six percent a year for last 15 years even including last and biggest recessions we had before with that is like if you decide to buy property let's say you have buy house for six hundred thousand dollars and you need only five percent for down payments so thirty thousand dollars this is like thirty thousand dollars that probably means a lot for you right now 
But listen to this, when you do that, when you buy the house and invest this money, property will appreciate for 6% a year. It's about $36,000 in appreciation. Some people working full time to make this money a year. And when you invest $30,000 a year, you pretty much can double your money within one year if you buy the house. That's another big reason to do that. And reason number seven, leverage your money. The benefits keep going. Uh, if you invest in real estate and buy the property, uh, you're uh, gonna receive like five, six percent appreciation every year. And this is much better leverage money than like stocks and bonds because when you invest in stocks in a good market, you probably gonna, can make like 12 to 14 percent. But on real estate investments, you can make like 24 to 35 percent. It's much more money because you invest a little portion for down payment. This is portion much smaller than a full price of the property. And you got appreciation on the full price of the property, which means uh, you can make more money and you can better leverage your money when you invest in real estate. Reason number eight, tax write-offs. Uh, you can write off up to $10,000 every year if you own real estate property and you cannot do when you rent the property. That's another reason uh, to do those write-offs and you have to pay less money for IRS. At the end of the year, you're gonna go to different tax bracket. It's a big benefit for homeowners. And reason number nine, you can do cash out refinance when you own the property for a few years and build your equity in the property. Or you can do HELOC. HELOC it means home equity line of credit. I'm not really a fan of HELOC because it's, it's like you're pretty much borrowing from yourself a credit card against your house. But in situation when you need money, when you need to buy something, so some emergency happens, you can always get money from your house you know, put in some emergency funds you need to do. And um, you don't have to sell the property. You don't have to leave the property. You don't have to pay more for rent. You can stay with the same mortgage, with the same property and enjoy your benefits being a homeowner. And reason number 10, finally, tax-free exemptions. Uh, if you own the property as a primary residence uh, for two years out of five years, you don't have to pay income taxes up to $500,000 if you're married couples or up to $250,000 when you're a single person. That's another benefit. You cannot do that with stocks or bonds or bitcoins. So when you make money, you have to pay taxes. But when you own real estate property and if you sell, free. So it's a free money for you guys. And this is a huge benefit on real estate instead of renting. I hope this information was helpful for you guys. Uh, smash like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and stay tuned for my future episode. If you have any questions, please put comments below, and uh, you know, call me, reach out to me, text me. I would be love to be your real estate resource. Make a fantastic week.